I'm Forrest Tanaka and tonight I'm going to do a interior real estate shot uh, showing how I would approach uh, some of the issues that come up with that and I'll try to outdo uh, the photos that you typically see in a real estate ad so let's take a look so this is my kitchen it's not a very big one so we need to achieve three goals here one is to make it look big of course we need to make it look bright which helps it make it look big and we need to make it look clean, which also helps to make it look big. Now, if this was a gigantic kitchen, it'd be a little bit easier to do those things. But uh, since it's small, that makes a nice test case for just your average house like this is. Uh, so I've removed a lot of the things, or hidden, a lot of the things that I normally have to make this, uh, uh, to, uh, that I actually use in this kitchen. And uh, just cleaned everything up. There's also a dining room beyond that I wanted to show in the photo. Uh, to show that it's uh, convenient and nice dining room uh, and I've turned that light on. The rule of thumb here for an interior shot is if there's a light switch, turn it on. So uh, I noticed I've forgotten to turn the stove light on, so I turn that on. And the lights, the main light here is uh, just cheap fluorescent, so typical for a cheap fluorescent bulb is that it has a green cast to it and that will enter into this uh, equation a little. I've set the light point of the camera to match the color of the refrigerator. And so that's all set up so that <clears throat> the refrigerator should look white. And so let's see our camera setup. Well, this is the camera I'll be using. It's a 5D Mark II, 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. And uh, because the 5D Mark II is a full frame sensor and I'll have the lens out at 24 millimeters, we'll get a pretty wide field of view that'll help us make the kitchen look big. And let's see, the settings are, I have it at 1 15th of a second at f6.3. Give us a decent field of view at this distance and it's fairly distant. So let's say, well, about 10 feet from the front edge of the kitchen. And Let's see, and I have it on a Manfrotto tripod uh, because it's at sl such a slow shutter speed and I have this uh, remote shutter release. So everything should stay very stable and I'll just take the shot now. Just a couple more things. Uh, one is to help me compose the shot. I'm actually turning on live view here and I've also turned on, this is an option in the uh, uh, 5D Mark II. I've also turned on the grid view of the uh, live view display. Uh, it shows a reasonably tight grid. What you really want in an interior architect architectural shot is that all the lines are vertical and straight. Now, this lens at 24 millimeters has some barrel distortion, and we'll fix that in post. But in order to get a good start at things, uh, we need to make sure that the uh, the lines of the edges of the walls and things are as vertical as possible. And so this grid helps with that. So now I'll take the shot. You'll also notice uh, I set up a couple of uh, place settings over there. Um, that's not the normal kind of place settings I use. And it's using the uh, silverware that I used in my other video with the um, uh, silverware shot. Again, that's a set of silverware I only use for photography so that they always look nice and shiny. Here we go. We'll get to that later. Make sure the camera's all settled down. And here's the shot. Here's the result. And here are the problems I see. One is this eating area turned out to be way too dark. And the other problem is this uh, dining room looks really purple. The reason for that is this uh, main light here, uh, being fluorescent, is actually casting a green tone over the whole kitchen. And I've adjusted the camera's white point to deal with that. But since the camera is now uh, making everything slightly reddish to uh, uh, make the green look normal, that anything that's not green, like this incandescent light, looks basically reddish-purplish. So there's a couple problems I had to fix. One is 
make this room look normal and the other is make the eating area look brighter. Now to fix the problem with the uh, purple color in the dining room, I'm going to use this Alien Bees. That's a studio strobe and I'm going to trigger it with this pocket wizard attached with a uh, phone cable and I also have this uh, plug here that uh, turns off the optical uh, uh, optical slide, I guess they call it. And because it was purple colored, what I'm going to do, and purple is a combination of blue and red, I stacked two gels on here. One is this green to offset the red, and one is this yellow. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell here, to offset the um, uh, blue color. So hopefully that'll even things out. And I'm going to turn down, or oh, you can already tell how purple it is in the video. I'm going to turn down the dimmer switch on that light so it'll provide just a little light and the strobe will provide the bulk of the light in that room. Now to solve the problem with the dark dining area, eating area, I've set up this strobe. It's a 580EX, uh, again pop, uh, triggered with a radio popper, and I have this shoot-through umbrella. Now the nice thing about this is that as uh, I think Scott Bourne and uh, uh, Frederick Johnson, Johnson of the Twit Podcast have called umbrellas. They are light grenades, and I'm counting on that here. I don't want an obvious source of light, uh, so I just want light to look like it's coming from everywhere. And the shoot-through umbrella will light up directly the eating area, and also it will bounce light off of the rest of this room to also light up the eating area. So that'll make a nice, even light. So I'll set that up now. All right, now we have our strobe set up. Oh, they look really purple now that the video camera is balanced with the kitchen. <coughs> Showing you some of this problem that we have to deal with here. Have the strobe set up, and so let's take another shot. Here's the image just direct out of the camera through the default RAW conversion. And so now you can see that the dining room is now pretty much the right color. In fact, I'd say exactly the right color. And the dining, this uh, informal dining area is now lit up properly. So let's uh, recrop it here and get rid of all the stuff I don't need. Like this wall. Oops. Turn off the constraint there. Don't need all of that wall. Don't need the ceiling here. a little bit of this let's see how that looks and let's see we need to bump up the overall brightness maybe a little fill extra contrast and I'd say that is so for our first pass looking pretty good I'd probably um, clone out this phone jack if I had time and maybe the speaker uh, to clean those up and you'll notice here what I was talking about earlier, there's some barrel distortion. This is Lightroom 3, so it has this uh, uh, automatic lens correction. So let's turn that on. See the effect here, hopefully. Oh, there we go. And it straightened that wall right up. And let's see, we also need to rotate it a little bit. So go to manual mode, or actually I can just use the crop tool. Get that line straightened up. So now the wall is straight, not curved, and not at an angle. And I'd say this is looking pretty good for a uh, real estate poster. Well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, that's this is just how I would approach these things, and there's many ways to do it. Um, I'm hoping for the next video to make sort of a part two, where I take a photo of a bedroom uh, for a, a real estate ad. And I'll see how that goes first. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I'll have that ready. Uh, thanks again to all the people who've subscribed to me lately. And I really, really appreciate that. It makes this a lot more fun. So I'll see you next time.